Anybody seen this? I got this in an email not long ago. You can't read the bottom. This is what the caption says. <laughs> it would have been better too, I think, to just use the original photograph or the original photograph of the lithograph from 1790 or whatever it was that was first issued. Any questions? Oh. Yes, please. I didn't know that case in Oregon, the good case in State versus Hall, is the Supreme Court case. But I wanted to ask you, the other thing that's going on in Oregon is, as best we can tell, the only state trooper vehicles that don't have mounted video cameras are the ones that have drug dogs. So we have these drug dog cops that are out trolling. Is that what's happening in Arkansas or elsewhere? Or? A drug dog usually shows up in a different car. They haven't been driving around with the dogs in the car so much but they usually have one within five or ten minutes away, and I think they try to make their stops close enough for the drug dog to get there quickly because they've been cross-examined enough about taking so long to get the drug dog there that it took 20 minutes to get the drug dog there. Right. Is that itself a continuation of stop? There's a bad Eighth Circuit case law that says, well, what's the difference between three minutes and 20 minutes on the side of the road? It's nothing. It's minutes of this extension. And there's cases that actually say that in the Eighth Circuit. So, of course, we got a bunch of Nazis in the Eighth Circuit. <laughs> Have you seen any cases yet on um, the cops manufacturing the stop, you know, harassing the people who are getting right alongside and running at the fast behind them? That happens all the time in Oklahoma. And I'm wondering if it's happening elsewhere and if there are cases on it. Well, that would go to your objective basis for a stop in the first place. Was there one? And none of that's usually on it. Uh, tape because the tape is usually designed to come on when the blue lights are turned on. So if they're pacing the car, they're driving next to them. And I've had clients tell me the cop pulled right up next to me and looked in the car and looked at me, saw I was Hispanic, and then pulled back and then pulled in behind me and pulled me over. Only when they turn on the top lights does the camera come on. And the original intent in Arkansas was for the camera to come on earlier, and it doesn't. So you can cross examine about lack of evidence for whatever that's worth that the camera wasn't on to record their basis for the stop. Well, there's one Texas case where they raised this basically as an entrapment um, on the traffic violation itself, and that went down in flames. I don't know if there are any other cases like that. Well, entrapment causing somebody to commit a traffic offense they wouldn't have otherwise committed. I can just say the cop caused the traffic offense by pulling up to the car and making him slow down or pull over because he saw the guy getting next to him, so he pulls over farther to the right and crosses the fog line is their, one of their favorite excuses so it's, to stop. It's, it's basically creating the police created the exigency. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's the way I've argued. Or police created traffic offense. Okay. But not, it's not a traffic offense. Yes. Out, out in California, I've never had a case where there was a camera in the cop car. I've often thought it's a great idea and would help to make the court system more efficient and would keep the cops more honest. You know, is there any like movement politically in any states to actually make it mandatory? Every time they pull somebody over, they got a video and audio tape? Well, I started in Arkansas back in the 80s because we were claiming pattern and profile stops. And the cops admitted during the trial in that case that they had been trained to profile people. So it was just, we settled the case by consent decree and had them put cameras in the cars. That was the first go around of them having cameras in the car. When they reached a certain percentage, there was no requirement for the consent decree anymore. But that was the impetus for them to do it 20 years ago. And we forced them to do it, essentially. But I thought every state had them in the car because it's for officer protection is one of the reasons why it's there. If the cop gets shot, you got the video of the stop, the license plate of the car that they pulled over. And cameras are so much better today than they, they were before. Nowadays, they can be practically invisible to the person, to the person, to the cop himself, or the other person. I think of all the DUI cases that they get much quicker pleas because they just don't give the video of you walking out of your car. That's right. well, yeah, really John, drunk. I have a discovery device on that. In Oklahoma, where all of the interstates intersect, there's this one particular interdiction unit. It got funded by some federal grants that never had video cameras. Okay. 
So we went to the DA Council, who made an open records request for their grant applications and fundings for five fucking years. They applied for money from the feds to put cameras in their car. For five years, they were given money to put cameras in their cars. They have never put cameras in their cars. <laughs> so like sometimes, prime just by yeah. things like that, you can at least dig up something to call to call the question. Well, that certainly goes to them having the ability to produce some kind of physical evidence of the crime within their control, and they chose not to do it. Yes. Now, there's another ticking bomb out there. It's the Atwater case. In California, they're successfully arguing that Atwater trumps Terry and that none of this stuff about reasonable suspicion matters. Since the officer could arrest you for any traffic offense, any subsequent search is lawful, period. And there's two California appellate cases out of Orange County that hold this. And to me, that's a really scary ticking bomb. Well, it is because a traffic offense has no physical evidence of the crime. Therefore, what's the purpose of the search incident? Unless it's not having a driver's license and you're searching the guy to look for a driver's license. And that's really a stretch in itself, but that's about the only way you could rationalize it. Yeah, it's pretty scary. It's called the case of Gomez in California. It's, it's coming our way. I think if your state Supreme Court got that, it might take care of it. Let us hope. <laughs> I kind of vaguely recall Gomez now. Yeah.